Hi, I'm Chris from bikereview.com.au and today I'm having a look at Triumph Street Triple 765R. Uh, this is the middle of the line offering from the new Street Triple line. As you can see here, it's had a whole heap of updates. Uh, most noticeably, the 765cc triple cylinder engine. So it's been expanded from the old uh, 675cc Street Triple. Um, big news for Triumph is that's going to be used as a Moto2 power plant, which is really, really great news for getting Triumph uh, a little bit more uh, exposure around the world, which I think is going to really benefit them, hopefully. Um, so having ridden this bike, it's easy to see why it's been chosen for that. Um, compared to the old model, it's much, much torquier. I own a 675R and uh, jumping on this, I was actually amazed at how different the engine characteristics are. It's still very Triumph, it's still got that Triumph whistle to the triple, however it's just so torquey. Um, they've done a really, really good job with the ride-by-wire. This has got uh, four modes, three of which are presets and you can obviously modify them within that. Uh, and one is a user mode which you set up yourself for your own custom settings and it'll save it like that, which is another great feature. Uh, with these, with the three different variants, uh, you get more modes the higher the variant you got. So like I said, this is the middle of the line offering. Um, it doesn't have the quick shifter as standard, which is a bit of a shame because I think particularly these days, that's one of those things that really pushes a lot of models over the line. Um, it's got a nice gearbox in it. However, at the same time, especially for just riding around uh, an up quick shifter, <clears throat> it's kind of an expectation really, especially for a premium uh, naked bike like this. And uh, while obviously this is significantly cheaper than the RS, it's still a very premium offering and uh, they've taken the Street Triple to the next level. So obviously one thing you'll immediately notice, this has got really nice styling. They've beefed up the model, uh, it's got nice bodywork, everything's more integrated, it's a lot cleaner. Um, obviously where the old Street Triple was kind of thinner and more basic, they've like I said, beefed this up. It's got a much nicer front end on it. It's got these nice kind of teardrop styled uh, headlights, which still probably aren't as nice as the round headlights that originally came with the Street Tribbles, but they're a damn sight better than the last generation, which had kind of the, you know, rectangular headlights on them. Um, so moving towards the Speed Triple as far as styling, and I think they've done an awesome job with that. Obviously it's still got the uh, very noticeable subframe, uh, different colours depending on what model you buy, so that's a nice feature, helps the different models stand out. The R on this is actually here on this little mini cowl which is in front of the instrument panel, so that's a nice touch. And uh, obviously in the white and the red, it's uh, quite a traditional Triumph colour scheme. Um, if you're a fan of like the Daytona and some of the older street tribbles. Now ergonomics have always been an area that have been really a strong point for Triumph. Um, something that I think they've only further improved on with this model. For me, I own a 675R and I've found it just perfect. So obviously if you're larger or smaller, that's going to vary a little bit. There are just some bikes which are always that perfect fit for you and the Street Triple and the Daytona have been that for me. And jumping on this, I've been further impressed. Uh, it's got a nice reach to the pegs, very natural feeling. It kind of has me in that perfect position where I've got my knees where I need them so that I can grip quite naturally. Um, I can move around on the bike very easily. Uh, just exceptionally good ergonomics for me at 180 centimeters and also on the leggy side. Uh, like I said, that'll vary from person to person, but I just find it one of those machines which I jump on and I feel instantly at home, really, really natural. It's a nice reach to the bars, nice and natural. Good vision through the mirrors. Uh, I wouldn't mind a little bit more rear view on the very edges of the, that vision. However, I mean, that's what shoulder checks are for and they're just good overall mirrors. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be putting on bar ends and going the real street fighter route with this and this is the kind of bike which is going to look awesome just with some really tasteful modifications, most of which you can probably get through Triumph um, and obviously there'll be all the aftermarket accessories that you can get if you want to go a little bit more off the beaten track. Uh, jumping on the bike and going for the first ride, I did feel the suspension was quite soft uh, when you're going at quite low speeds around town. However, it actually makes really, really good sense just with these standard settings that we've got the bike on. Uh, basically around town, it's uh, nice and comfortable. You know, you've got really good bump absorption um, for 
you know, going up over speed bumps, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it feels quite natural, not too sporty. However, you just take it out onto the twisties and the suspension really hunkers down and feels exceptional. It's pretty much perfect for me. And uh, it's not far off the Olin suspension, which I've personally set up and had help with other experts in setting up on my 675R. Um, so the fact that this is performing at such a high level to me is a really, really good sign. Uh, it really shows they've put a lot of work into that suspension package, which is what you want. And obviously being nice and adjustable, it means that you can do a lot with it um, before you hit the constraints of the suspension and need to start looking at, you know, spending more money on it. As I mentioned, this has got three different modes. Uh, you've got a rain mode, which is great in the wet. You've got a general road mode and then a twisties mode. Um, when you look at it, you've actually got visual representations of which mode you're in, so which is a bit of a change from anything I've seen before. Um, however, in saying that, it's something that's very easy to identify with. The controls are quite simple. You can change modes really easily, and then you've got easy access into the instrument dash uh, via this little uh, toggle here, um, which is like a, a basically a button which moves on axes, which allows you to do all different things in the one button. Uh, that's a nice touch. It works quite well. The controls, it has got auto cancelling uh, indicators, something which I'm not, you know, not one of those people who goes, oh, every bike needs to have that. Um, I don't notice so much the cancelling because I'm in such a habit of just cancelling them as I go through the corner or complete my lane change. However, what they have done well is when you hit the indicators, you've got that real feeling that something's going on. With a lot of the electronic systems, you know, you don't know whether you've turned them on or off. It's really, really frustrating. So they've done a good job in making sure that all these controls, when you hit something, it does what you want it to do and you can feel that you've actually hit it right. So really, really good job there. Um, obviously that comes down to much higher quality switch blocks and uh, they've made the investment. So that's really nice to see. It's much like they've got the uh, Triumph name here on the tank uh, where previously it was a decal under the clear coat. This actually sits on top. Uh, you could obviously remove it. Um, I'd like to see how this lasts long term. Uh, I'd like to see how it looks in a couple of years time and whether it's still looking as good as it does now. Um, if so, I think it's a good choice because it does really stand out on the bikes themselves. The paint is nice and deep, really high quality. You can really see the speckle in the paint. I'll see if I can get some images to illustrate that, but it's a, it's a really nice high quality bodywork. Um, which is what you'd expect from Triumph because they do really put a lot of effort into making their bikes look, you know, beautiful. Brakes are one area I'd like to talk about. This has got really nice brakes on it. However, what we found is that there's way too much pull in the lever before those front brakes come on, which just is really unpleasant for when you're riding. Uh, we don't believe that there's anything wrong with the braking system itself. Judging by the tyres when we got the bike, someone's had a really good go on it and the brakes are in need of bleeding because this hardware should provide a beautiful, crisp, instantaneous braking performance. And uh, once you get through all that pull, the braking performance is really good, but it's, uh, it's just unpleasant to have to deal with that. Uh, rear brakes, you've got just enough power and control to slow down in city traffic, uh, stabilise the bike. Um, Nothing that's going to cause problems there. Obviously the bike does have ABS, which is really, really good. Traction control as well. It's got all the safety features that you'd want on this kind of machine. And the triple cylinder engine is just beautiful and torquey. So talking about the electronics and the ride-by-wire, Triumph have done a really, really good job. These bikes do have a slipper clutch, which helps when you're aggressively downshifting and also on top of that the throttle response is really really nice and smooth. Uh, first gear has been shortened. I'm not really sure I agree with that because it does mean that first gear uh, can be quite aggressive. Uh, obviously you're shifting up into second quite quickly and you can roll around in that around town. You've got plenty of torque from down low and you've got a smoother throttle response uh, both in road and the track or twisties mode. As far as riding this bike, uh, what really stands out is just how easy to ride it is and just everything works so well. Through the twisties, uh, I can hunker down on this bike, 
everything just does what I want it to, it goes where I'm looking, slight corrections with my upper body or how I distribute my weight can just give instantaneous line corrections. So, I mean, you just feel like you've got so much control on one of these through the twisties. It's really nimble. It can, you know, you can smash it through really tight areas where, you know, on larger bikes, it's a lot less comfortable, it's a lot less effortless. So it really does live up to that Street Triple name. Um, I have to say, if I was looking at one of these and looking at one of the old street triples, I'd be really hard pressed to decide between kind of the more old school styling and the engine, which I think might have a little bit more character compared to this, which has more power, more torque, uh, much more of a hoon machine, awesome styling. I think I'm a fan of the old round headlights. I think the old street triple holds it over this model in that regard, but everything else on this, I think has been a massive improvement. So obviously the new Street Triple has traction control, it's got ride modes, it's got switchable ABS, it's got quite an extensive electronics package. You can turn those auto cancelling indicators off, which is nice if you're not interested in those. Um, it's got so much control through the dash, you've got a user settable mode, so you can set everything exactly the way you want it. You can just go to that mode when you need it, so that's a really, really nice move as well. Uh, overall, the fueling is really nice and smooth. Uh, the short first gear is a little bit short to me. Obviously, without testing it as a longer first gear, it's hard to really make a judgment call, but I feel like that might have made the bike a little bit smoother around town. However, realistically, uh, once you're moving, once you're doing second gear and you're doing, say, you know, 50, 60 k's an hour, right up into the twisties where you're doing whatever speed you're happy with, uh, it's exceptionally smooth. The slipper clutch uh, has quite a lot more resistance than what I'm used to on the 675, which is more track designed. And in doing that, I think it actually makes this a better road bike because it's much easier to roll off the throttle and decelerate with the engine braking and the slipper clutch particularly if you're aggressively downshifting, which let's be honest, particularly if you've got an aftermarket exhaust is awesome fun. So you can really hear that exhaust going and you know, blip the throttle as you downshift. Uh, obviously a little bit hoony, but let's be honest again, that's what this bike is all about. It's an awesome hoon machine. And the new electronics package just adds to what the old, strip, old street triples had. Um, just makes it, uh, you know, I'm not going to say funner machine because obviously the electronics control things somewhat, um, but the talkiness of this engine is awesome for overall usability on the road. You can have so much fun with this. Uh, probably the main constraint is, you know, trying to stay somewhat close to the speed limit because this thing is just beautiful to ride, very, very easy to ride fast, exceptionally easy to ride fast. In fact, Obviously I fit this bike quite perfectly, that's why I have a 675 myself and uh, I find this one of the easiest bikes to ride fast uh, on our proving ground. It was so smooth, so quick, where I'd have to be working on a lot of other machines or I'd feel their weight. On this, not at all. I just was totally at home, I loved it. Um, there's plenty more room to push if I wanted to um, and you know, that's just what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a bike which I can have heaps of fun on and is going to do everything I want. The electronics are a boon, but to me they're a safety boon. They only ever really come into it when something goes wrong, which really should be almost never. You know, if you get one or two uses out of them a year, you've probably saved your ass and you're going to be happy with that. Uh, with that said, I think that is the expectation with the new generation motorcycles. They need to have the safety package, they need to have the electronics. Obviously being Euro 4 compliant is very important these days, even though I think most motorcyclists really don't care about anything except perhaps the fuel efficiency. We don't want them quieter. Uh, emissions, yep, that's good, but at the end of the day we don't want the bikes getting quieter and we don't want them more restricted and we don't really want the manufacturers having to compromise on things to meet Euro 4. However, when you look at a bike like this, they've done it and they've done an exceptional job in doing it. So here I am with the Street Triple. Uh, overall, incredibly impressed with this machine. Uh, it's a definite next evolution of the old Street Triple. Uh, taking on board all the electronics, they've done a really, really good job with that. It's smooth, it still has much of that triple character that's so iconic for Triumph. And uh, it's just really, really an exceptional offering. I think the old Street Triple still does very much hold its own as a more basic uh, machine. It's still heaps of fun. 
Uh, but this, this bike, the new Street Triple R, the 765, it just, it takes everything to a whole new level. And the electronics, which could have just been added to the old model, uh, they've really made for uh, an exceptional machine here with this 765cc version, which we're gonna be seeing in Moto2 in their race bikes in some form. So that's another really, really great feature to see for Triumph. So if you've liked our video on the Street Triple R 765, let us know. Uh, if you've got any questions, we'll do our best to answer them. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the full test on bikereview.com.au. Thank you.